Hey guys, this is Owen with Turretech USA, and today we're going to be installing our pannier racks on the BMW 1300 GS. Sometimes they do come with pannier racks from the factory. Uh, ours is equipped with this Vario luggage system right here. If you're planning on running Turretech aftermarket panniers, any brand of soft panniers that are supposed to be rack mounted, ours are a fantastic option and give you some great luggage room as well as some additional support for the rear of the vehicle. Let's dig in. So we're ready to get started with the install with all of our parts and tools laying out, as well as these instructions, which I went online and printed off of the product listing at turretech-usa.com. The tools we'll be using today are a T40 Torx, a T27 Torx, a 13 millimeter, and then a six millimeter Allen wrench and the appropriate drivers. All right, so the first step is to get your factory luggage mounts as well as your factory passenger foot peg rests off of the bike. These are held in with T40 fasteners, two on each of these locations. Grab your tool and start removing those fasteners. With these two parts removed, the final fastener is the same T40 Torx bit, just on the underside here. So we'll pop that off and then remove this bracket. We're gonna have to undo this electrical connection right here. So now let's get the passenger foot pegs off. Now that we've got this uh, whole assembly removed from the side of the bike, there's a couple different ways we can proceed. If you don't want to return to this system and have no plans of using it again, you're free at this point to just snip this wire and cover it in electrical tape and push it up into the frame. Since we may want to turn back to this system later on and we want to retain all factory functionality, we're going to be turning this around, undoing the two fasteners at these locations, which are a T20, and then once we've got those off, we'll pull this clamshell apart, just working your finger in there, which exposes the internal setup. Now that we've got this clamshell torn apart, there's one zip tie that holds this connector down. I just snipped that with a pair of pliers and then we have to remove the electrical connection right here. There's a small locking tab that needs to come out, so I'm going to be pulling this way on this connector while pushing this lock up. With that disconnected, we can push this through here, wrap this up with some electrical tape, and hide it away up in the frame of the bike. Now that we've got our attachment points exposed, we're ready to start putting everything in place. The first step is the passenger foot peg bracket. You know that you're using the right side if this bend out here goes away from the bike and out. So, Hold that up into place and then use the factory foot pegs as well as the factory bolts to get everything lined up. Again, these are the T40 fasteners. It's helpful to get one started so that it holds itself into place and you can slide the other one in. We're gonna be leaving this fairly loose to allow for some adjustability and fine tuning of the angle of the rack once everything else is starting to take shape. Just finger tight's great at first. The next step will be putting the pannier rack in place, so let's go grab that. So the rearmost word attachment point of this pannier rack is gonna be held in place with an M8 by 65 bolt according to our instructions. 
The other thing we'll need is the longer of our two spacers. So we've got one that's 30 and one that's a 26. So what we'll do is use this longer one, the M8 by 65 Allen head bolt and a washer and get the rear attachment point on first. This is where it can help to have a friend hold something in place for you. I like to pre-thread the washer onto the bolt, push it through the attachment point, and then slide the spacer on. That way you can use your six Allen in order to get this one in place. All right, with the rear attached loosely, we're ready to get started on the next attachment point up here. This fastener is going to be an M8 by 55, also with a washer, so thread that on there, and then the smaller of the two bushings. Push that through your pannier rack there, hook your bushing into place, and then thread it on. All right, now that this is in place and both of our attachment points are still loose and able to move around, we're ready to hook this forward fastener in place. This is going to be a Torx head M8 by 20 bolt, as well as a washer. And on the back side will be a M8 nylock nut. So pre-thread your washer onto your bolt, push it through your pannier rack, making sure you're going through the bracket on the back side, and then thread your bolt into place. With all three attachment points loosely in place on the bike, we're ready to start on the other side and then get our crossbar attached. Let's jump over. With both sides of our pannier rack loosely in place and ready to go, we're ready to put the crossbar in place. You'll use one of these washer attachment points and slide it in like so. With that in place, we're ready to get our final bolts ready to go on. There's a small plastic piece right here that will slide over and then your bolt goes through both of those and lines up into place. On the rear side there's going to be a washer. So get your washer in place on the back and then thread your nylock nut on as well. And then we'll repeat the process on the other side. All right, now in order to get this wire tucked up into the subframe of the motorcycle here, the process is pretty simple. We start by removing the middle attachment point between the two grab rail bolts here with our T40 Torx wrench. We'll hook that in place, loosen this fastener up, and remove it from the tail section. With this out, we'll go over to the other side and remove the same fastener in order to get some wiggle out of this factory tailpiece. And then we'll jump under the seat to show you where to tuck the wire. Now that we've got the middle bolt pulled out of the tail assembly on this side as well, this whole area is loose, kind of the, the rear mudguard, I would call it. So in order to get this dangly wire out from underneath, we need to get into this passenger seat. Be careful of the wire if you do have one equipped with the heated seat. And it's a bit of a shimmy motion where you hold the mud guard out of place and then you grab the wire and just feed it up into the rear tail. You'll see it pop under the seat and then you can just tuck it away in place. Reattach the seat. and we're ready to bolt everything back together.
All right, now that we've got everything attached to the bike, we are all done with this install video. My favorite part about these Turretec racks is that there's three attachment points on each side, and for the first time ever, a cool little extra flare that fits in with the design of the bike. All this attachment means that this essentially acts as a additional rear subframe, reinforces the tail of the bike and gives you some extra rigidity. So if you're running it just without anything on these racks, at the very least, you know that they are gonna absorb a lot of the impact from those parking lot tip overs and any of your, uh, your, your downs on the, on the bike. So with that being said, we're ready with these racks in place to mount any of our Turretec hard luggage options. We've got some Zega Evos here. And then you're also ready with these racks to mount some of the Turretec soft bags. With that in place, we're all set. Let's go riding.